I don't know how to make clever. I don't know how to make clever thumbnail faces. Okay, I just don't. It's not. Well, it's not in my my uh, repertoire. Okay, it's been a hot minute since I did a Q and A. I've been trying to do these seasonally. Did I do one this winter? I don't even know. Maybe I didn't. I will. Po I will put a link to my previous one below. I don't remember when it was fall or winter. Um, if you guys want to see more questions to answers. And as always, I try not to answer things that I have before, but sometimes I just forget what I've answered before. You guys, I've been on YouTube for so long, I don't remember what I've told you over the years. And also, sometimes people ask the same things again um, and again, so I, I tend to answer those if they are like popular questions. Um, but I, I just... Um, posted on Facebook said if you have any questions I'd love to answer them and here I am gonna sit do this, this rapid rapid fire for me haha <laughs> that's a good joke Jen awesome joke um, I'm just gonna go from the first comment down and answer as many as I can that don't seem like I recently answered them if that makes sense okay so here we go Katie asks when will we see more planner videos I love yours also do you see yourself going back to an Erin Condren planner anytime soon I haven't picked up my planner since the baby was born this is my planner I have a bullet journal I love, love it that's not true I did actually it's a new book and I filled out the first like few pages of it um, back in February and but I haven't actually planned anything since before the baby was born and I was just I've been thinking in the last couple of weeks really that I really want to get back into it and bring it back into my routine um, so I think actually soon I'm gonna start doing that again and I will share a look at my new my like bullet journal for this year um, basically um, I'll do like a quick flip through for you guys at some point uh, but I don't see myself doing normal planner videos again um, I feel like I've done that, done a lot of that. Um, I mean, again, for right now. <laughs> I can't say f for the long-term future, I probably will go back into them at some point, especially if I change up my system. But I've been using the same bullet journal system for a year now, I love it. And I've done a lot of videos on them. I'll put a link to my planner video playlist and you can see all of them if you want. Um, but I, don't, I haven't really changed up my system in a while, so I don't. I don't. Oh my gosh, the camera is shaking. <laughs> I don't know why did I choose to film this in here when I'm doing laundry. <laughs> you guys, my laundry machine literally against that wall. <laughs> Are you sick yet? Oh, I am sorry. I am sorry. This is what I chose to do, and I am not moving. Okay, well, we'll wait for there. It's off the spin cycle. Okay, and do I see myself going back to an Erin Con Condren planner? Not right now. I do enjoy them. I think they're the most beautiful, like, pre-bound planners you can buy. Personally, I just think they're gorgeous. They're so well thought out. They're beautifully made. They have excellent quality materials. They're just fantastic. I can't say enough good things about them. That's why I talk about, I've talked about them for years and years. Um, it just, I don't need that kind of planner in my life right now. I, why am I doing, why am I filming this in here when the laundry is going? Forgive me, you guys. I'm sorry. I realize you're going to hear the dryer. You're going to hear the washing machine. I sat here. This is where I am. I don't have much time to film. <laughs> this is just, I apologize. Anyway, I wouldn't be opposed to going back to one someday if that sort of planning suited my needs. But right now, I'm really still into my bullet journal and I'm going to pop back into that. Kat asks about body image and how that might affect my daughter as she grows up um, in in a way like seeing a mom that's insecure and then her, like my daughter now falling in love with herself because she's modeling herself after me. That is honestly one of the things that I have, that has affected my recent shifting perspective in body image a lot. And I did a chit chat video on that. I'll pop that up in the link for you guys if you wanna see where I am like really just for the first time in my adult life at 35, figuring out how to love myself regardless of what I look like. And my daughter is two and I feel like this is the time. Like it's, 
I feels right in my heart and soul. I feel like wise and old enough to appreciate myself in that way and I'm doing the work to get there. And it's it's emotional work, it's mental work. It's not working out and getting to look like super skinny or whatever and then I'll love myself. No, I am going to love myself regardless what the number on the scale is, what size jeans I wear, whatever anybody else says. I don't want that to, to affect how I feel about myself. And I've come a long way, to be honest, in the last, you know, 20 years. Um, but especially this, like right now, I am like really, really moving in that direction. And I think showing that process is a powerful message to her too, that you can overcome, you know, what you thought was just a part of yourself um, before. In my case, having low body image and low self-esteem about, you know, my body and stuff. And then overcoming that, teaching myself how to overcome that. I think that's a powerful message for a child to, to witness. Even though I'm not, like, talking her through it, of course she is sensitive to things that are happening with her parents and, you know, the people she lives with. And she knows when either of us are going through something or we're doing, you know, we're changing things up or we're learning or whatever. She's, she, you know, absorbs all of that. So I think that that is a good learning model to have is to show how you can you can change yourself you can teach yourself how to change um, so I am thinking that's pretty powerful and the end result hopefully is me being much more accepted accepting of myself and I already am in the last like a month I feel like I've made huge progress just by having an attitude shift um, so she'll get the best of both, I would say. That would be my answer to that. Lots of questions about if I'm going to do a tour of Donnie's nursery. Yes, you guys, yes. I have not hung the artwork in his room, and I need to. I want to buy a new light fixture, and I want to buy a bookshelf, I think, um, and a couple of shelves. So hopefully as soon as I get my act together, that's kind of on my list of things to do this week is to wrap up purchasing those things, and then... Um, figuring out where everything's gonna go and getting them hung and stuff. So hopefully soon. As soon as I have that stuff up, you guys, I will film it. I will. Um, let's see, Kimberly asks, do you guys, do you think you guys will be going to Disney again anytime soon or wait till Donnie is older? We have booked our trip. We are going next spring. Donnie will be one exactly, pretty much exactly the age that Charlotte went on her first trip. He'll, he'll be 13. Well, he'll be a little older than she was. He'll be 14 months old, and she was she was just 13 months old. Uh, but so, so, no, she was 14 months old, too. It just, it just stars align. That's when we're going. We're going next March. I cannot wait. We've booked it. I'm so excited. Can we start counting down now? Like, is it too soon? <laughs> I don't know. Charlotte keeps talking about Disney World. She loves it so much. We went in November last year that was our last trip and she's still talking about it all the time all the time and she's like oh when are we going back when are we going back i'm like well we will go back but it's not for a little while because how do you I mean two-year-olds don't have a great concept of time and how do you explain like a year <laughs> it seems like a long long time to explain um let's see julie asks if i'll be doing a house tour of sorts um not a full house tour i don't meh, i don't feel the need to do that i show so much of my house in my videos um I'm, the, the first floor is a work in progress. I'm considering having the fireplace, our like stone fireplace whitewashed. This is something I've been thinking about for a year and I just, I'm like nervous to take the plunge because if I hate it, I don't know how to go back. Um, but I think that's something I'm gonna try to have done this summer. Um, and I still am working on the living room. I just haven't had time. I really haven't. Um, it's not that, I haven't made the time. People don't like it when you say, I don't have the time. When it, and I understand that, honestly, you do have the time for lots of things, but it's how you choose to use your time. And I haven't chosen to use my time to finish the first floor. I still need to finish up the mudroom organization. For, for real, Jen, get your act together. And I, and I just want to um, do a few things in the living room to finish it up. And I'll show those things when they're done. I don't know if it'll be an official tour or not. Um, probably the mudroom will be, but, um, yeah, I'll show you guys, I'll show you, I'll show you. Lots of questions about if I'll do an updated car organization video. Honestly, I don't think it's very exciting, but I will try and to film that soon for you guys. Um, I don't do a lot of work. I keep my car pretty tidy in, 
Now, I don't keep too much in it, I think, but I guess I do store lots of things for the kids. So um, that was kind of, <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Yes, I will film a car organization video. Uh, would you do more day in the life videos instead of all sit down videos? I did one a couple of months ago and I have one coming up again for you guys real soon. This is not something that I want to do on a regular basis, like super consistently, but I do want to do it every once in a while. So you'll see them every once in a while. Amy asks, how was your vaginal delivery recovery compared to your cesarean delivery recovery? Was there a huge difference in pain healing long term effects? If you were to have a third child, which delivery method would you choose? Great question. Here goes the <laughs> Sorry again about the shaky camera bit. I don't know why I chose to film in here. That was the mistake. Um, the va the, I had a V-back. I will link my um, delivery story for you guys if you want to hear more about that. But hands down, way easier than cesarean recovery. Yes, it was definitely sore down there. I had stitches. It took a while for those to heal but it was night and day recovery for me. Um, the C-section was much more difficult of a recovery. It took much longer to feel like I was back on my feet. It was just more physically difficult because it's a major surgery. Um, I had to be on heavy duty painkillers for a couple of days with that. I didn't have to do that with my vaginal delivery. I was in the hospital for five days. I was only in the hospital for three days, two, two three days with my vaginal. Um, and I was on my feet right away. Whereas with my um, cesarean, I felt like I had to be resting more, um, which actually works out, you know, it worked out really well that I could have a vaginal delivery because I have a two-year-old and a husband with a bad back and I really needed to be able to physically like function well. And I was, um, and I felt like pretty well put together pretty soon after the delivery and, um, like I said, it was sore down there for quite a while, but it wasn't the end of the world, really. It was just like the first week was pretty sore, and then I felt fine um, for the most part, and then just like residual soreness, and then I, you know, by the time I was at my six-week postpartum checkup, I was like, A-OK. -okay. Um, so if I were to have a third child, which I'm not going to, I'm going to clarify, no more children, not happening. Um, <laughs> Not that I have anything against people with large families, I just, I'm at my capacity, I'm very happy, and feel very complete with two. Um, if I were to have a third child, I would hands down hope for another vaginal delivery, because it's just, I would not elect to have surgery again if I could avoid it. I had to have surgery, you know, I had to have the C-section with Charlotte because of the birthing circumstances, but um, yeah, that would be my experience with that. Erica wants to know how Don is doing. Don is doing great. He is um, had another back uh, surgery this March, and he is just in the last couple weeks really doing like his recovery is really more complete, and he's able to do more now. And he's back in physical therapy in the past week, and he's just really doing great. Work is going well. He's busy, but he's in a good way you know sometimes work busy isn't great if like things are tough at work things are seem to be going pretty smoothly and he's doing great and i know people miss seeing him in the videos but he's just honestly he's really he's he's busy with his his you know work stuff right now and it's um between that and me just feeling a little bit more protective of sharing him online um for reasons i've talked about in the past in other videos and stuff um he hasn't been cropping up as much in the videos, but he's doing great. And uh, thank you for asking. Do do do. What advice would you give? Okay, Cor Corina. That was, what a pretty name. I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> I probably am not. What advice would you give for a first time Disney trip? My advice would be to go in with a sense of what you want to do. Go in with a sense of, okay, we'd like to go to these parks and take a look at the advanced calendar on Disney's website to see which parks are open early or stay open late, which days. I don't know what your family situation is, but with us with little kids, we do the parks for a couple of hours in the morning. We try to get there pretty early so it's not crowded and it's not hot. And then we have lunch either in the parks or back at the resort or at a restaurant or something, and then we the kids nap and then the rest of the day is just kind of taking it easy and going to an early dinner and then an early night in. So that's kind of our 
um, schedule with with a family, a young family, and um, honestly, that's kind of what we did before we had kids too. We always liked going to the parks for the parks for the first half of the day, and then having kind of a leisurely afternoon. Because I think you get the best of both world, worlds then. But some people like to go, go, go parks all day long. And that's cool if that's your jam. I just recommend taking a look at the advanced calendar. Seeing when the when they're early. You know, when if you're staying on property, you can get extra magic hours. Where you can get into the parks early or stay late. Um, so see what those times are. And that might give you a, a basic time frame of like what days you want to go to which parks. And if you're factoring in any shows you're going to attend like want to see at the parks or any dinners you want to do make sure you have your dinner reservations taken care of i highly recommend that disney is getting so 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 increasingly popular you really want to make sure you have your dining reservations i think you can do that 180 days out so make sure you get on top of that for sure especially character dining if you're with kids those reservations fill up super fast um and um I think aside from having that kind of loose idea of a structure of your trip, just being flexible when you're there, um, you know, letting yourself enjoy instead of feeling like you have to get to everything that you've predetermined you want to do. If you have a general, I think having a general structure just makes me feel like, okay, I know what we're doing the next day, but then be flexible about it. Um, yes, we're going to go to Magic Kingdom today, but maybe, and you've already booked your fast passes or whatever, which you can do online as well, I think 60 days ahead. Um, but maybe you don't make it to every fast pass, or maybe you decide at the last minute you want to change plans, just hang out at the pool, or maybe you want to go to Universal Studios and for a couple of hours, you know, one day or something. So I think for me, having a a little bit of a schedule in my mind beforehand of looking at kind of the basic things we want to do helps a lot with um, kind of timing planning, but then just being flexible and going with the flow when I'm at, when we're actually there and we're if, you know in it. I would say that would be my advice. Um, and if you're going with kids, um, I would you know sit down with them and see what what their expectations are and what their desires are, what they most want to do. If they had to only pick one thing that they really want to do, what would be that thing? And make sure you do that one thing and make sure every kid gets their like thing. Um, so it's fair and, um, you know, just be mindful that everything is a wait and factor in time for that. Even with fast passes, even with reservations, there is a wait. Um, so factor in that that kind of a mentality that you know it's not instant gratification when you get there and everything's ready for you right away <laughs> especially preparing children for that that kind of needing to wait for things um, I think is important to adjust expectations and just enjoy just enjoy um, some uh, D Donna asks what uh, my must-have essentials are when traveling with young children we are flying a few times this summer with both kids for the first time so I think I'll probably do a carry-on like what's in my carry-on video um, sometime this summer for you guys to show you guys what I'm bringing on the plane with two <laughs> Emily asks are you using your kinda system and if so how are you liking it the kinda system is a breast a breast pumping storage solution where uh, it's a, they're like, you know, those standard almost, hmm, how do I explain this? They're freezer bag, breast milk freezer bags, but they have a nozzle on them that screws into different attachments to attach to a variety of different pumps. So you can pump right into the storage bag and freeze that. And then the storage bag actually screws right into um, a, you know, like the, bottle nipple basically and you can feed your baby without having to put it in a different bag so instead of having to pump into a container and then pour that into a storage bag and then freeze that and then thaw that and then pour that into a bottle it's all one thing right um, and I have been using it and I have loved it I um, did nightly pumping for about almost two months I would say close to two months um, and to build up a freezer stash, which is exactly what I did with Charlotte as well. And then I just stopped like a week ago because um, I felt like I didn't need any more than that. I am home with Donnie most all of the time, so I don't need a big, you know, I don't need a, a rotation of um, breast 
milk on hand. I have a nice backup stash in the event of an emergency. I have quite a bit to help, you know, get through, you know, if for some reason I need it. Um, and then what happens now is if I do need to leave him during a time where I would be feeding, I have to pump on the go just to keep, you know, myself from getting engorged or having plug clog ducts or anything like that, or to affect my supply. And then I can swap in there you know, in and out with what we feed him with a bottle from there. Right now, I, I try to make sure he has a bottle like every week or so, like once a week or once every other week, just to make sure he's still taking it. Um, Cece would never take a bottle, so all that breast milk was just, sadly didn't do anything for us that I had in the freezer, but you can donate breast milk. Did you know that? Mine expired before I knew about that, unfortunately, so I had to toss it. Which is, a tr which is a crime, really. I, I wish I had known. But I will donate um, breast milk if we don't get through um, what I have frozen for Donnie. Um, but yeah, I do like it. Um, I think it would be really convenient if you're somebody who has to pump regularly as well. Um, but it's worked really well for us so far. Donnie likes the nipples that come with the Kinda system, so it works for the bottle situation as well. But they do have attachments to, so you can connect other brand um, bottle nipples onto so you can basically use it with anything I think it's it's a really cool thing I will link it below if you guys want to check it out it's a really cool product uh, Anna or Anna I'm not sure asks if uh, what my must-haves as a mom of a newborn and a toddler she misses those baby related videos um, I was thinking of doing a, like a newborn essentials um, now that I've had two newborns so far in my life feel like I, ha I know a little more, but I don't know. I just never get my act around to filming them, but maybe I will. Um, I tend to share my favorites, you know, in my, share my mommy and baby pics in my favorites videos, just a couple every month. Um, so I always mention my favorite, favorite, favorite things there. Liz asks, when Donnie gets older, do you plan on running at Disney again? And both kids can do kids races. Wine and Dine is 10th anniversary next year. Oh, I didn't know that. I love the Wine and Dine, that's a great race. Um, I would love, love, love to run Disney races again. But even more than that, I would love to be able to just run again. I currently cannot run without injury. Literally not even for five minutes. Uh, I've been having a lot of kind of structural issues in the past couple of years. Pelvic alignment issues. Um, I have a bunion on my right foot I've had for my entire life, basically, that's gotten much worse since I've had babies. The weight and stress of pregnancy, I think, really took a toll on my feet. And that throws off my whole, like, alignment and balance, and I end up having, having incredibly tight IT band on my left leg and issues um, kind of in my hip and glute area, and I get a knee injury even just walking quickly, my knees flare up. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to run again. I would like to. Um, I'm going to hopefully address the bunion issue at some time, some point in the next couple of years. It's getting really difficult to even walk, to be honest. It's very painful all the time. I was thinking, I always kind of knew I would elect for the bunion surgery at some point. I was kind of thinking I would wait till both kids were in like full school day age where I wasn't so needed, you know, <laughs> to be on my feet and stuff. Um, but I might have to move that timeline up just based on need. Um, so I'm hoping to get to the foot doctor soon to kind of talk about that and see what the situation is and if it's feasible and um, necessary to maybe move that surgery up. And I don't know if having that surgery would make it more possible for me to run or make it less possible. Um, but I just have to keep an open mind about that and and understand and accept that running might not be in my future. But if it is, and I can do it safely, um, you can bet your bottom dollar I will be back at Disney for races. I don't know about the, the kids. I don't know about the kids. I mean, that would be up to them. Um, but we'd have, I don't know burn that bridge when we get there, let's say. And I've been talking for a long time, so I'm gonna pick like a couple more questions and then stop it there. Um, lots of questions about potty training. To be honest, you guys, that's something I just kinda wanna keep private um, for personal reasons. Not that I have anything against people sharing potty training tips. They come in really handy and I appreciate when people share their tips, um, but I personally don't want to share that experience with my children. It's just something I don't want to do. Um, 
Holly asks, will you do a double birthday party for your children? If you didn't know, Charlotte's birthday is in late December and Donnie's birthday is in late January. So their birthdays are only a month apart. That being said, no. <laughs> no, I don't plan on doing double birthday parties for my children if I can help it, unless they want that. If when they're older they request that, of course I will honor their requests, but they'd have to both want it. I personally think that their birthdays should be celebrated separately. Um, it's important to me that they feel like they're celebrated individually and not like clumped together. Just like for Charlotte with her birthday being so close to Christmas, I like to make sure that we celebrate her birthday as her birthday and not lumped in with the holidays. So I choose to celebrate her birthday a little bit after her actually birth her actual birthday. Of course on her actual birthday we, you know, celebrate with her as our own little family unit, but to do like parties and stuff, we wait a couple weeks till the holidays are over. We're into January and we can have a nice party that's separate from Christmas. Um you know, Don Donnie's not close to any holidays in terms of his birthday. Uh, but I, I don't see myself lumping their birthdays together um, unless, like I said, they specifically both wanted that. Okay, last question. Trisha, how do you stay positive? Tips on keeping an upbeat mood. This can be difficult. I think in general I'm a pretty positive, optimistic person, but I do have a tendency, you know, especially with anxiety being such a part of my young adulthood, um, I, I tended to get stuck in things um, and and felt really stuck in anxiety for a long time in my young adult life. And really it's only recently, in like the last five years, that I don't have that experience anymore. I do get it sometimes. Anxiety just has not left me completely, but I manage it much better. And to me, staying upbeat has a lot to do with how I handle myself emotionally. And I think what happened to me about the time I turned 30 is I had been doing a lot of work in the last, you know, my last couple of years of my 20s, um, really identifying the roots of my anxiety and kind of exploring that and going deep and like exploring my, my shadow self, as they say in, in Jungian philosophy, and kind of going under the surface and trying to really sort that out to, to bring all that up to the surface so I could see it instead of being scared of it. Um, and I think that helps a lot in, in having positive outlook, is actually confronting the negative stuff. I spent so much of my young life trying desperately not to see anything negative in my life in terms of feelings or situations. I would pretend, I would, you know, put on a facade, I would just smile through everything and I would, wouldn't, not even not talk about tough things, I wouldn't even acknowledge to myself that they were there. And I just, that builds up inside of you. Eventually that will build up and build up and build up and if you do not address it, it will come out in some way or another. It might be a physical ailment, it might be, you know, any number of things. But at some point, you it's just going to get to be too much. And um, if you don't deal with it emotionally, your body will have to deal with it. And that is not great because it will, it's not good for your body to deal with those feelings. You want to deal with them emotionally. Um, for I think for the best health, mind, body, soul, spirit, heart, all of that. Um, so for me, it was really taking a good hard look at those difficult things that I didn't want to acknowledge, to unpack them, to see them, to accept them, to work through them, and then to move on. Instead of holding on to things so tightly, with trying to like hold the lid on the box down so tightly, um, and then just having that accumulate till I'm like knee, you know, neck deep in it, right? Um, unpacking it, even though it's difficult. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's, it's not fun at all. But then you can process it and, it and you can move away from it and it's one less box in your like, you know, basement, let's say. I'm getting all sorts of metaphorical on you here. And that, has been, that was a really tough lesson for me to learn and it was a really difficult practice for me to implement but I was very mindful and purposeful about it. It's something I really wanted, even though I really, like, 
I didn't want to do it, right? But I knew I had to. And when I really accepted that, then I wanted to. I don't know if it's chicken before the egg or egg before the chicken, whatever you want to say here. But um, I am so glad that I faced those really long held, <laughs> tightly packed boxes and unpack them and I'm still unpacking them um, but I've gotten through most of them and I'm now I'm able to whenever something difficult or challenging comes my way I'm much much more capable of unpacking it dealing with it and moving on I move on from things so much quicker and honestly that keeps me so positive whereas before I had to really fake it I had to really fake the positivity as a as a young adult I would say um, I felt like I had to be happy all the time or nobody would really love me or want to spend time with me. I don't feel that way anymore. I still battle with that. It's something I definitely have to be mindful about. And I think I will for the rest of my life. It's just part of who I am. It's, I, I don't automatically go to sharing everything, um, even just with myself. Um, so I have to be very conscious and proactive about it. And But it's so important to me, especially now that I see the benefits and just how much happier like really much happier I am not fake happy truly happy um, and it really has nothing to do with situational things you could have the best life on paper and still feel awful inside right you could have a really difficult life on paper and be lit up with joy I think it's 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 about how you handle yourself emotionally. I take so much better care of myself now and I know that means facing the difficult things. And that keeps me really positive, even through difficult times, even through challenging times, even through times when I really don't wanna open the box, you know? I don't wanna go through it, I don't wanna unpack it. I can do it and, I, and it, and I can do it thoughtfully and I can do it with care and I can do it loving myself regardless of what feelings I have or emotions or you know things that are going on and I can just love myself and I can be there's so much joy in that I cannot tell you even through difficult moments there is so much joy in being able to take care of yourself in that way in my experience and that's gonna conclude this video because I think I've been talking for like an hour and <laughs> I need to go get my baby, I'm, I'm assuming. Let's take a look. He's doing like a power nap this morning. He has not napped in like two weeks, so that's, that's not true. He hasn't napped well in two weeks, so I'm really glad he's getting a good nap today. Um, and it gave me a chance to film. I do apologize about the laundry situation and the shaky camera. I am so sorry. Um, I'll try to be more mindful of that next time I choose where to film. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all well. I'll try to do another one of these this summer. So I will keep you guys posted when I'm ready for more questions. And I will see you real soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.